part of this computer. Can we, yeah. can we just hold on one second? Yeah, sure. <laughs> is edited out. So it's more just, it's in the background. Um, we will turn a 15 minute conversation into a three to five minute conversation, depending how it goes. So at any time, if you feel like I need a do over, just say pause, do over. Don't forget your pauses. Amy, don't forget to look at the camera. Cause I know that you're, I know it's natural to feel like you're looking at the person talking, but just be yeah. sure to look straight at the camera. Any questions before we get started? All right. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, it's it's supposed to be fun. Don't worry. And we yep. will make you look fabulous <clears throat> on, uh, through the editing. Not that you don't anyway. So let's get started. And um, you've got a script. Again, feel free to pause. I'm going to go off screen and off mic. And you okay. can just start in whenever you're ready. Again, be sure to have an unnatural pause, like even count to three if you need to, to give that space for editing. I'm going to go off mic, Zach. I suggest you do the same off camera, off mic. And I, yeah. I was just going to say, you know, don't hesitate again to ad lib, you know, go off the script. It's okay if we've got, got extra content. We'll, we'll, you know, I want to make sure you say what you want to say and, and yeah. don't feel like constrained. Exactly. It's a vehicle for you. Okay. Super. All right. All right. We're going to get started. You can take a deep breath. It's not a big deal. And you can start whenever you're comfortable. Hello, I'm Amy Sheldon, state representative from Vermont. And I'm Jim Furnish, a retired deputy chief with the U.S. Forest Service. I'm just going to interrupt you this once. Again, the pauses are really important, so I don't know that we can even edit that. So remember, count to three. Put a big three, oh, sign okay. whatever. To count to three so that when you say, all right, one, silence, two, three, and then say, hello, I'm whatever. And um, yeah, we'll make that work. Just remember Okay, things. thanks. Yep, yeah, oh, bye. Hello, I'm Amy Sheldon, Vermont State Representative. And I'm Jim Furnish, retired Deputy Chief with the U.S. Forest Service. We're here today to talk about the global, yeah, yeah, I gotta start over. No it's worries, to, no worries, deep breath. I'll, I'll just say it's, it's actually really hard to have a script that I'm not supposed to be able to look at and talk at the same time. So I'm putting that out there. Um, you know what could help, Amy, is if you read the question, pause, and then give yourself a moment, and then speak. So again, it's not like you have to be in a conversation with Jim. It's more like you're just ready, and then you're going to say it, and then you can even pause for the, the answer. So it's we're just looking for those clips, and then we'll stretch them together okay. if that's helpful. Yep, OK. We are here to talk about the opportunity to protect 30% of our lands and waters by 2030 and to help recover old forests across the United States. I'm just going to interrupt one more time, Amy. You might want to try that again, just because you had a laugh and it's going to be difficult to post together just, uh, yeah. just naturally. Yep, yeah. that's it. Yeah, naturally. Okay. Nothing. And, yeah. and don't forget, just count to three before and then, then it will go. <clears throat> Thank you. We are here to talk about the opportunity to protect 30% of our lands and waters by 2030 across the Northeast and the United States. Well, Amy, let's get started. Um, tell me more about the 30 by 30 initiative. In Vermont, we recently passed the Biodiversity Protection and Resilience Act, Community Resilience Act. It sets a goal of conserving 30% of our lands and waters by 2030 and 50% by 2050. It also defines um, what conservation means in terms of the focus being on biodiversity protection. Well, thanks, Amy. And uh, this summer, the state of Vermont signed the Community Resilience and Biodiversity Protection Act to conserve not only 30%, by 2030, but 50% by 2050. Why this bill? Why now? Uh, why now in this bill in Vermont? Um, well, we had a really great foundation in Vermont already established with our Fish and Wildlife Department doing uh, solid conservation work with the Vermont Conservation Design, which is a framework for conserving 80% of Vermont <clears throat> species by um, looking at the landscape as a whole and setting conservation targets in that manner. We wanted to uh, 
set the goals in statute, both for the state of Vermont, which it's estimated has already conserved about 22 to 24% of its lands, um, but we wanted to codify it and make it clear what we meant by conservation of biodiversity. Additionally, we set the goal of 50% in Vermont um, because we wanted to base it in the science that E.O. Wilson put forward as the challenge in his book, Half Earth. I thought it was really important for us to link our goals to the larger goals and also elevate the conversation across the country and around the world to focus these conservation goals on meaningful biodiversity protection. And maybe Amy, before you before we move on, I was do you want to say anything about um, just the context of this uh, summer of climate change chaos? I don't know, as kind of you know, and 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 the climate resilience angle of it too. I don't know, just to have a a a, a snippet. Yep, a sure. So this is the Community Resilience and Biodiversity Protection Act. And by community resilience, we, be, we are focused both on natural community resilience and also human community resilience. This summer in Vermont, you may know that um, we faced uh, major flooding for basically the entire month of July and part of August, sort of ongoing dramatic rainstorm events that impacted our communities um, Pretty, pretty significantly. And um, one of the things that happens with the Community Resilience and Biodiversity Protection Act is that it's, um, I, you know what, I'm really, I don't, I gotta just pause myself and say that <laughs> I'm not sure it's as important for me to look at this camera than it is to me, for me to get the words right. That's fine, so that's fine. I, I, I'm just, just, to, oh, just go ahead. Yeah, well, it's just not working for me to look at the camera. I gotta look at Jim some. That's fine. Jim, if I could ask, if you can look up, I think, um, Amy, you're sort of looking to the side, which is fine, but Jim, if you can make an effort to look up, it will look more interactive. And uh, please, Amy, do whatever is most when I'm listening? Yeah, just if you okay. can. Yeah, yeah. over. Yeah, sure. and, I, I, if, it, if it's supposed to be conversational, everyone's going to know we're on Zoom trying to look at each other. So that's, uh, I got to sure. go there. because I'm all right, all sure. Do whatever to, to is, little... makes you most comfortable. <clears throat> go ahead. Okay, well, what would be most comfortable is if we could just talk. Do you want to, <laughs> Jim? Like, what do, what do you want to talk about? What What do I want to talk about? Yeah, like in terms of like instead of I, I just I'm finding the reading the script is very distracting. Also. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> well, that's very interesting, Amy. <clears throat> um, I worked for the Forest Service for over three decades. Uh, my first job was in Maine. I ended up late in my career in, in Oregon. I, I say that because um, working coast to coast somewhat gave me an appreciation for the arc of the uh, importance of the timber industry to the United States economy. The arrival of the early Europeans um, in the New England states and then uh, much later as they worked their way across the United States until they bumped into the Pacific coast, they plundered U.S. forests all along the way. Um, and one of the tragic consequences of that was that in that process, they liquidated most of the standing old growth forests um, in the United States, old growth forests that characterized the U.S. forests. Um, and it was this concern for the loss of so much of our forest estate that led Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt and others to create the national forest in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, and try to preserve some of the conservation legacy that at one time existed in the US. Um, when, you, when you look at the estate of the national forests, the national parks, the national wildlife refuges, uh, the United States is one of the earliest in the world to devote themselves to setting aside some of these uh, magnificent lands as public in nature and out of the reach of uh, some of the crass commercial exploitation. Uh, they still hold a very important role in uh, the US society, our economy, um, the ecology. Um, and it's uh, tragic that so much has been lost. 
I think estimates of uh, the remaining old growth in the United States uh, forests probably range from one to 2%. Uh, so the vast majority has been lost. Uh, the implications for that in the world going forward uh, faced with climate change, um, the role of forests in storing carbon, uh, keeping it out of the atmosphere is tremendously consequential. Um, so I, I view what's happening with our national forest today as uh, very important policy considerations with a troubled legacy, uh, troubling future, um, but some reason for optimism if we can do some things to get this right. That's interesting. Um, my career started in Vermont and then I spent a few years working in Oregon. And also I've spent a lot of time in Alaska. So I'm also very familiar with the Western part of the country um, and more intimately familiar with Vermont um, in, in particular. And um, in Vermont, we've set these conservation goals into statute. Uh, and I mentioned that we have about possibly possibly 24% of our lands already permanently conserved. You're I'm right. sorry, I'm sorry. I say start start again from the beginning of that question. I'm sorry, Amy. You ready? Yeah. I don't really know where I'm going. Um, so it's interesting that your career started in Maine. Um, my career started in Vermont and then I was able to spend a few years in Oregon becoming very oh. familiar with the landscape out there and also their land use regulations uh, during the time of um, the controversies over old growth and oh, yeah. the now kind of interesting both fictionalization and um, documentation of Susan Samard's work. So I was out there during those years of protest and um, pushback on conserving and desire to conserve the old growth forests that remain. Interestingly, in Vermont, we've seen the reforestation of the landscape uh, until very recently. And now we're actually seeing um, a, a loss, an annual loss of forested land cover, which is heartbreaking in this moment when we know the importance of our intact forest ecosystem in community resilience and in um, our work towards adapting to climate change. You mentioned the role of the federal government. In Vermont, we do have a significant portion of the state is in the national forest. One thing I've noticed in the post uh, 23 storms is that our headwater streams, many of which are in our Green Mountain National Forest, um, sort of took a drubbing and so the management that is happening on those federal lands is critical to what's happening downstream in our communities. So I think it's an uh, opportune time for us to be looking at federal stewardship, how that land gets managed in the long term, and understanding its importance to our communities, both natural and human communities, in the frame of adjusting to climate change. Amy, if I could tie into that flood analog. Uh, it was interesting that we shared some time in Oregon because I worked there in the 90s on the Pacific coast, uh, kind of in the heat of the spotted owl crisis. For those who remember that, it was a time of tremendous upheaval. Uh, we had a huge flood there um, while I was working in the early 1990s. And the, the issues of the flood's impact on a heavily logged and roaded landscape were, were profound. Um, had a lot to do with my thinking about the need to revise a lot of our uh, forest management policy to accommodate uh, such events, which have only gotten worse in the last 25 or, or 30 years. Um, you know, it's worth noting that the, the Forest Service took a sharp turn after World War II and really adopted an industrial model for managing public forests. Um, they, they adopted the clear cutting of vast landscapes and clear cutting old growth. Um, got, got both of those in one fell swoop. Um, and this went on for, for decades. I think now we confront this issue that knowing that we have two great reservoirs of carbon in the world. One is our oceans, which are vast and sequester tremendous amounts of carbon. And we can't really do much to manage the oceans for carbon. Uh, the other great reservoir are forests. 
And um, sadly, if you look at forests globally, uh, they sequester a tremendous amount of carbon, but they're actually emitting more carbon than they sequester because of many impacts like logging and, and um, the uh, loss of forest lands to urbanization and this kind of thing. But we, we also have great promise to be able to manage forests in a carbon wise way. And, and that's one of the great issues I see before the Forest Service today going forward is learning how to manage forests for carbon as well as wood products. And um, Jamie, I don't know if you'll have that photo available to put into the uh, sequence, but I, I sent Zach a photograph of the Black Hills National Forest. I'm gonna allude to that here. That's fine, Jim. Um, we'll have to crop that out of the conversation since we're technically not here. But yeah, we can. Oh, yeah. We may be able to, yeah, true. to put in photos as you like. So yeah. Yeah. So I just mentioned that because I'm going to talk about that photo now. Okay. Um, super. So I've been doing some work with the uh, Black Hills National Forest in the last few years, even though I reside now in New Mexico. But I worked in the Black Hills early in my career. Uh, this photo is an example of, I'd say, everything that's wrong about current Forest Service management with an eye toward the future. Um, you can see here a landscape that's completely stripped of all of its uh, mature ponderosa pine trees. Um, this, this to me is just exhibits a mindless activity with no thought given to the future, to carbon storage, to the value of older trees, bigger trees, wildlife diversity, clean water, uh, social norms. Um, and I just, it, it breaks my heart having worked on the Black Hills early in my career to see this kind of thing going on. And a lot of my efforts recently are, are trying to convince the Forest Service um, of the importance of incorporating carbon storage in forest management policy. I think it's interesting to focus on the importance of our old forest. And of course, in the Northeast and New England and Vermont in particular, we have a very small amount of those old forests. But what we do have is mature forests that are moving into that same ecosystem function place. And what's critical today is that we identify those areas with the old growth forest characteristics and make sure that we're not actively cutting them now as we start to understand their importance in the future, um, not even the future, but in the now of carbon sequestration and um, flood mitigation functions that, that they perform for us. I, I would also like to add that I'm excited about the future because I feel like we're in a moment where people are understanding the critical role of, of our forested landscapes and not just the forested landscape, but the forested landscape that is uh, restored back to the old growth stature that we know is necessary, both for carbon sequestration, but also for biodiversity conservation, which we have to remember that we're focused on the dual crises of climate, but also biodiversity loss. And the beauty of doing initiatives like 20 by 30, um, the 30 by 30 goals for um, conservation, and then also the 50 by 50 goals is that they have multiple benefits to us as human beings and also as stewards. And I feel like it's a win-win and we need to help the public understand that um, it's absolutely necessary to ensure our future in, in addressing climate change. Well, I'm very excited about the 30 by 30 initiative because I think it illustrates the hope, the possibility that our public lands, especially federal and state lands, uh, can be transformed uh, across the United States and, and really begin to play an important role in uh, addressing climate change through carbon storage and, and ameliorating some of the effects of uh, a warming climate. Uh, it distresses me that I'm, I'm aware that there's still some clear cutting of Vermont's national forest going on. I hope that that can uh, be arrested and uh, we can bring back these beautiful, mature and old growth forest to New England and uh, in other parts of the country as well. You think that's enough? 
I do. I, I think that was fabulous. <laughs> what I suggest is that you, there's really great content. We'll be able to get a really powerful dialogue between the two of you. I suggest that you have a closing. So however you want to close, whatever feels most natural, go, go ahead. But just basically, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Maybe, Jim, go to two to three main well, reasons why public maybe, lands are important. Oh, go maybe, ahead. Jack. Can I jump in with one one other quick suggestion, too, which is just, you know, um, I, and I don't know if if Jamie's going to agree that this might be helpful or not in, in the final content, but I was just thinking you two are so well poised to say maybe something brief about, you know, um, the importance of leading by example, you know, with the U.S., you know, frequently preaching to the rest of the world. Um, you know, about uh, tackling climate change or, 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 you know, changing the way that we, we manage forests and, and tropical regions and whatnot, you know, um, I was just thinking, you know, maybe there's a, an opportunity here with this kind of global focus, uh, you know, to say something about uh, the imperative, you know, the moral obligation of, of um, you know, show, leading by example and, and, and anyways, you know, what, you know where I'm going with that. Sure. And well, Vermont is being always at the forefront. It'd be wonderful to hear that. Over to you. Remember like to, to pause a, before you give your answer. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll take a stab at that. It's, it's well known that the United States is, has been a horrific contributor to the current uh, global greenhouse emission problem. And, uh, and it could be so important in terms of global leadership using our federal forest to illustrate uh, what can be done proactively to try and help that turn around. That's that's one of the reasons I'm very interested in, in forming national forest policy across the United States. And uh, and again, I think it's a real opportunity for conservation leadership for the chief of the Forest Service and others to step forward to illustrate what can be done uh, positively to uh, to restore some hope to this uh, to this future. And I and I would say particularly in terms of the, uh, the Forest Service's own somewhat troubled legacy in helping create some of this problem, it'd be very fitting if they could step forward and do some of the right things to help solve uh, some, of, some of the issues that they've created. In Vermont, we've um, established these goals of conserving 30% by 2030 and 50% by 2050, and we're a, a tiny little state um, but by codifying the goals and creating really clear definitions in statute, I feel like we are setting the bar pretty high for others to begin to have their conversations, other states uh, in the country and other, and other countries. We'll hopefully look to our legislation for guidance and inspiration and um, the really important role that science plays in having these conversations. And Amy, it was nice to work with you. Uh, I uh, wish you all the best going forward. Thank you for your, your courage and your resolve to do some of the right things regarding uh, Vermont, its conservation, its future, its forests. Thank you. And thank you, Jim. It was great to meet you and to um, learn about how important your role has been in helping move the conversation forward at the federal level. Thank you. Fabulous, wonderful. We have so much rich material to work from. Thanks for your patience and thanks for the fussiness about lighting and everything else, just part of the, yeah. the nature. So Thank Jamie, so when are we gonna get the finished product? Um, <laughs> let me just say a couple of words about the process. What we do is I'll run this through our software that will generate subtitles so that we can look at the content as a whole. Then Zach and I, will, we're doing this for uh, four other couples um, of people uh -huh. that are showing the differences of public lands and old forests, then we'll put together a video edit, which is basically second by second saying to our video editor, this is what we want, this is what we don't want. Mm -hmm. And then as a result, we'll have, um, Zach will be the MC for this session. We'll put it together. We'll have a top and a tail and we'll have a, a nice asset. It will be broadcast November 7 through 9 globally. So as I said, we've had uh, over half half a billion unique visits over three years. So this is something the UN really promotes, but it's also something you can feel free to promote. It's really a, a showcase for you 
to be able to say, these are issues that are important to me. Look at all these other people who are talking about it. And we'll also have the High Ambition Coalition. That is something you can point to people that reinforces the 30 by 30 message. And um, yeah, and if you'd like, we're, we're happy to share with you the video cut so that you sort of say, okay, you know, really don't want to be seen saying that. There is a, a chance yeah. for us to do a little bit of further editing. Sure, sure. Well, I'd be curious to see it when you've got it touched up. Of course. Up. Um, we'll make sure uh, everything you know, is available. Huh? I've been retired for over 20 years, and I, I continue to get involved in interesting stuff. And I just want to thank you, Zach, for inviting me to work with Amy on this. Uh, it's just illustrative of, of all the really wonderful work that's going on around the country in uh, in continue to push issues like this. And and uh, I've never done anything like this before. It was cool. So thank you. Me you neither you're a rock star. <laughs> um, yeah, ditto all that. Thank you both. Um, I, Jim, would love to talk to you about how to move the ball forward in Vermont. I'm sure Zach has talked to you about it. I'll talk to Zach about it too. But the Green Mountain National Forest should be not just ashamed of continuing to cut old trees, but the headwater streams all around my house are an embarrassment. The undersized culverts blown out and the erosion and just like the impacts to water quality are horrendous. And wow. they got to they gotta focus on restoration of these areas as their primary concern. It's a huge piece of what's happening downstream here. You can, you're just, we're living it. Um, well, we've got each other emails. Um, and I right away have some ideas because it sounds like you're now living a lot of my lived experience in Oregon after the big storm. And we did undertake some important restoration activities that related to things like culverts, fish, roads, uh, the old clear cutting. And uh, I think there might be some applicability for you there. But there is, you know, yeah. I, I've been frustrated talking to the Forest Service, believe me. Um, it's just... Well. I, I'm unimpressed different. with our guy here locally, so I don't know when he's going to move on. But I'm like, yeah. I don't know, Zach. I don't know, Zach. We need to schedule some time to talk and catch up. But okay, yeah, no, it would be good to get. And and Amy, I guess uh, just to say, Jim Jim has already actually met with Chris Matrick. Um, so yeah. he so he he's a he's kind of uh, you know briefed on what's going on locally and and knows some of the players. So yeah, you should definitely yeah. connect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I will. Good. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thanks yep. Yep. Bye bye. Bye. Great, great job. Thank you.